Hi, my name is Ali Shersovar and in this short video we are going to talk about why we need extra damping in a differential mode filter for EMC purposes. So uh, in one of our previous videos we uh, designed a uh, differential mode filter. Uh, in that video we calculated a value of C and a value of L and we basically said that we have got A filter like so. Now, um, if you also remember, we talked about Middlebrook stability criteria, and we know that the Z out of the filter has to be smaller than one tenth of Z in of the power supply. Um, here now we have a problem because this filter resonates, and at resonance, the impedance of the filter also resonates and goes up. I have not shown the, uh, the plot of the impedance of the filter. Uh, I've only shown you the, the actually body plot of the filter, but we know that the impedance also peaks at resonance. And in our case, is around seven kilohertz for now. If I leave this filter as it is, even though I have selected Z out to be much smaller than Z in so that I do not violate the Middlebrook stability criteria, at resonance I have no idea what happens to that size of this and it may get very close to uh, uh, the mid this input impedance or the power supply and cause its instability. And therefore I need to damp it somehow. Now, the first thing that you may think is that, okay, what I can do is I can add an extra damping resistor here and that will take away the high Q and will result in everything being damped. Unfortunately, this actually breaks the attenuation as well as the cutoff frequency of our filter. I have shown this structure with the red trace here. So first, if you look at the blue trace, that is the LC filter without any damping at all. You can see that the Q is very high and then it rolls off at a rate of 40 dB per decade. And that is because it's a double pole filter. Yeah? And then I think, oh, you know what? This peaking is far too high. This is going to show itself in the Z plot, which I have not shown at the moment, but it's going to cause me instability. Let me damp it a little by adding a little bit of resistance or maybe the ESR of the capacitor in order to damp it. As soon as I do that, I get the red trace. If you follow the red trace, it's going there. You can clearly see that the peaking has gone, but look at what's happened to the attenuation. It is not attenuating at a rate of 40 dB per decade. It's going actually at the rate of 20 dB per decade. And the reason for that is that the addition of this resistor, or even the ESR of the capacitor, adds an extra zero to the transfer function of this filter, and therefore completely messes up my calculations in terms of attenuation. Now, wouldn't it be nice if I could keep the cutoff frequency the same and the attenuation the same at a rate of 40 dB per decade, but also damp this Q. And it turns out that you can. And the way you have to do it is to add your, instead of adding the resistor here, so let us take out the resistor. So you still end up with exactly the same value of L and the same value of C that you calculated, but you can add a much bigger capacitor, usually an electrolytic, with big ESR, or you can have external resistance. And provided that this one is at least five times bigger than this one, so let's call this C1, let's call this CD for damping, and CD has to be bigger than five times C1. it will not impact the cutoff frequency or the roll-off. However, it will damp the Q. The resistance, let's call this RD, could be the ESR of the capacitor. If you wanted a Q of one, we know the equation for it. We know that Q 
is equal to 1 over r the square root of l over c. So you can select r so that it gives you a q of 1. And you can see here now on these plots, the black plot itself, I'm going to draw on it so that you can see it, is when I have selected a capacitor that is five times bigger, everything stays the same and I have selected this damping resistor to give me a Q of 1 and you can see that not only the damping has gone away but I am not losing my attenuation. And that is why when we design a differential mode filter, we always calculate our L and C first to give us the desired cutoff frequency. Then we select a much bigger, usually electrolytic capacitor um, and with enough damping to give us a Q of around one. Now, what we're going to do next is we have designed a filter. Uh, on this filter, I have got my L, which is right here. I've got my C, which is a ceramic over here, and I've added the, a very lossy electrolytic with big ESR. And I can, with this jumper, remove the damping, i.e. The, the electrolytic, in and out of the circuit. And I, and I propose to you that regardless of whether this damping capacitor and the associated resistance is in the circuit, the roll-off and the cutoff will stay the same. However, without it, we will see massive peaking. So we now go to our test setup with the Bode 100 to make sure that this proposition is correct. Okay, so here's our uh, test setup. I've got the Bode 100. I am injecting a signal over here into my filter and then I am plotting uh, the uh, Bode plot of the filter uh, which is being picked up by these two channels over there. As I mentioned earlier on, I have got uh, an LC filter. This is the L part. Uh, this no note that I've balanced them between the line and return. You usually half the value of L and you put half of it on line and half on return so that everything is nice and balanced. And I have got a ceramic here which is forming the LC filter. Uh, so if I look at this now uh, without the damping or the larger capacitor, let's make a measurement, you clearly see the peaking around this area and you also see that's the uh, at the resonance frequency here on the phase plot you have got a massive 180 degrees phase loss pretty much immediately. Now obviously at this point here as we discussed the uh, output impedance of filter also shoots up and that is the bit that may cause uh, instability and now what I have here is a very lossy electrolytic capacitor with enough ESR to damp the Q to around one and by putting this jumper in that goes into the circuit and I'm proposing that this will only damp the Q and will not impact the roll-off. So uh, let me first save this tray so that we can compare the two. And now I simply add in my damping capacitor and damping resistor. And there we go. You can see clearly from here that the, the peaking has completely disappeared. But unlike just a resist, uh, the capacitor with lots of... Uh, uh, resistance, uh, the attenuation is staying at 40 dB per decade and also you can see that in the phase. So this trace, the one with the sharp phase roll off was when the Q was high and the, the blue trace now you can see that is very shallow that shows that the Q is actually quite uh, low and yet I have maintained the very good 40 dB per decade roll off that we had.